Hi, I'm Mark, coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is Sunday, the 23rd of December, and uh, it is my heartfelt wish to, uh, to wish everyone a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year to all. It goes with that, I really mean that. And uh, I know our, our country is in a bad way right now. We're mourning the events that happened in Connecticut, and uh, we acknowledge that. That's a terrible thing. Okay, I'm coming to you now because I've got to give you what we call a sit rep. Sit rep. Situation report. This is what's going on. You need to know this. People have uh, asked me what's happening, and there's plenty happening. All right. Um, last week we attempted to move some of our animals to slaughter. Uh, the reason for that is the state has said that we cannot sell or offer to sell our animals under under the invasive species order. So we are not lawbreakers, and we decided to go to court with them because we did not agree with what they said. So we are not breaking the law, and so we are not moving those animals. But we felt as though moving them to slaughter, they're no longer alive. Uh, doesn't the state get what they want if we take our animals to slaughter? So I called up DeVries Meats. Uh, we've done business with them for about five years now. They're about uh, 80 miles south of us. Called up there to get a an appointment to get some animals in, about 20. He called me back a couple days later and he says, I'm sorry Mark, we can't take your animals in. And what he said, Ken DeVries said, was that the USDA has says that our pigs have characteristics that classify them as an invasive species. So characteristics that classify them as invasive species. And uh, you know, I don't get a chance to argue that one with the USDA down there at DeVries Meats. Uh, the way it's done is Ken simply says, I won't take your animals for slaughter. So the animals are here and they eat every day. It's just so, for those of you that are, are not in the farming business, to feed pigs is, it's like, it's uh, pretty expensive. You know, you're talking probably a dollar and a half to two dollars a day per animal. And when you are not selling them on the other end, uh, that feed becomes a real burden. I mean, a real burden. Now, let me outline for you when this started. Last time, last year about this time, is when we found out that our pigs were illegal. And as of April 1st, we would have to dispose of them or dispossess them, as the DNR likes to say. We didn't think that was right. We think they had their facts uh, turned around so we chose to take the gentlemanly approach and go to court with them and we have done that uh, they have stalled us every chance they get we still have not had a chance to argue the case and it's a year later and the way it looks right now is we don't get to go to court again until summertime for Baker's Green Acres, we cannot sustain that. We have close to 200 animals here right now, and that feed bill is somewhere around two or three hundred dollars a day. We cannot sustain that. Now that we can't send the animals to slaughter, the state has effectively come around up from behind, and they've uh, they've circled around us and they've they've closed us off. So here it's December. I have several more months of winter to go and I have no feed. And as I've told you before, this is their goal. This is their goal to come after the small family farm and make it impossible for us to operate. Uh, another option that I thought I might have was to move some of the animals to a different state. I have a friend that lives in the next state down. Went to see the vet about getting health paperwork to move them. Of course, if I move these animals across the state border, then it, it creates even more problems without the correct health paperwork. Um, that didn't work either. The veterinarian uh, is reluctant to help us with that and it's because the state is leaning on him to do that. Uh, actually what was said was that the state veterinary, the head vet, referred it to the DNR. So now the Department of Natural Resources is 
got final say on whether an animal is healthy and can be moved across state lines. So they really, they, they have us, or it appears that they have us. Okay, I want to bring in something else right now. I, I want to make it pretty well known to you out there in the audience that listens to what I have to say. Um, the state of Michigan gets very nervous when I talk about historical events. I talked about the Revolutionary War. That really set them off. That was enough to bring federal agents into our lives. Right now we're, um, we're dealing with quite a few things com uh, along those lines. And in my opinion, this is a local issue and a, at, at best a state issue, but it's not a federal issue. But they've brought federal people into this. Um, but I am going to refer to uh, something right now that's near and dear to my heart, and it's called uh, the Berlin Blockade. All right, this was after World War II. Allies had taken Germany, and um, the Soviet Union uh, blocked the Western Allies railway and roads from any food going into Berlin. All right. Uh, their aim was to force Western powers to allow Soviet uh, Union to supply Berlin with food and fuel, thereby giving Soviets practical control over the entire city. Now think about that for a minute. Soviet Union wanted to block the Allies' effort to free Europe by cutting off their food. Hmm. They wanted control of the food that went in and out of Berlin. Sound familiar? This is what the Allies did. This is what the Americans did. The Americans mobilized and flew over 200,000 sorties into Germany delivering food and fuel, even water at, at sometimes. They were so closely stacked up flying in there that that's where we, uh, we developed our, our, uh, our air control system that we use now on uh, you know, air operations throughout the United States. So it, it was a terrible thing what the Soviets did, wanting to starve you know, a, a population of people, but the, the Americans stepped up and said, I have an idea. Right? So I've been thinking about this. Um, effectively, what the state has done with us is they have blockaded us. I cannot move my animals off legally. Um, I cannot take them to, to slaughter legally. Uh, and we are law-abiding citizens. So what shall we do? Um, I propose an effort to feed these pigs in the face of this state oppression against my family, against my farm. <clears throat> this is what happened. By the spring of 1949, the effort was clearly succeeding. By April, the airlift was delivering more cargo than had previously been transported into the city by rail. The success of the Berlin airlift brought embarrassment to the Soviets, who had refused to believe it could make a difference. I don't think the state thinks that we can make a difference. The blockade was lifted in May of 1949 and resulted in the creation of two separate German states and the rest is history. What we have done since this was begun on us last April, as you know, I refuse to kill my animals. I refuse to voluntarily give up my livelihood. So what we've done is we've made deals with restaurants to get their, their scraps, and we've fed our animals with scraps. We feed them bread, stuff like that. But there's no way that if we're, we're not selling our animals that we can buy feed from the feed company, all right? So we've scrounged now for, what, six months to, to feed these animals. And I am, for the first time, I am at the point where um, our farm has suffered. We have no, absolutely no cushion left, uh, none, zero. I can't buy feed if I want to buy feed. 
uh, and scrounge and feed is is tough this time of year. Uh, you know, I've, I'm down to one truck, and it's a small truck, so I can't scrounge much feed at a time, and it's really taken up all my time to to get that done. So I'm for the first time I'm at the point where uh, it feels like the easy way out is to to quit and actually shoot my animals and push them in a hole and then go on to other things because I do have to make a living and I have really put that on the back burner now for a year and uh, trying to get it going again is difficult. Now let me talk to you about the way that the state operates and why this uh, becomes a bit of a difficulty for me. Alright, as I've said to you, we decided to act like gentle people and go to court with these people that are imposing this on us. Something as as crazy as if you have a pig with a straight tail or a curly tail, that's an illegal pig and you have to get rid of it. I think it seems kind of stupid to me. So we go to court with them to get it straightened out. What they've done is they have prolonged this as long as they can. We're at a year right now of being held from doing our, our farming operation. All right? We go to court with them. We're forced to walk through metal detectors. We're forced to take things, everything out of our pockets and make sure that we're not carrying any kind of, uh, you know, any metal objects or anything. But they come in with uh, multiple, like in the first case, there was about 17 people. And we, we believe that it was at least eight to ten of them were armed. Uh, there was, let's see, there was four state troopers, there was four sheriff's deputies, there was five feds in the room, um, bomb dog, metal detector, uh, state police cars going around the outside of the building. I honestly, I didn't think it was for us. I thought there must be, a, you know, a, you know, I thought maybe John Gotti was being tried up there and. Uh, in Sheboygan, but it was for us, and uh, so they that's how they treat it. And they're all wearing bulletproof vests, too. Um, we did not choose to go to the OK Corral with these guys, we chose to go to court with them. So it just shows us that their initial response is with, with violence, right? And so now here I am, you know, on my farm out in the middle of nowhere, and so our nerves are up a little bit because every time these guys, every time we meet with them, they, they seem to just. Uh, they want to. That's how they operate. They want to. Uh, they want to go someplace with this where we just do not want to go. Um, they're not financing their operation at all. They take the money from tax money, so they've spent lots and lots of money to do this. And if they had taken that money and maybe spent it on sharpshooters, ooh, don't want to say anything about guns, but guys to go in the woods and kill these feral animals that don't exist. They would have been much better served by doing that. Um, here's another thing that's kind of interesting. I'm going to show you some things right now. I'm just going to show you the... These are depositions. We deposed uh, Nancy Franks, Dr. Bates from the university, uh, Rodney Stokes, and a guy by the name of... Uh, Mr. Guthrie, who's a swine expert, we deposed them. We wanted to get them on the stand and ask them some questions under oath to get to the bottom of this whole declaratory ruling thing. Straight tail, curly tail, floppy ear, straight ear. And the state, the Attorney General's office, put a gag order on this. So all this information in here, and believe me, it's really good information. I can't show this to you. So that's how the state operates. Hmm. What are they afraid of? I wonder. Okay. Now let's talk about this if I quit deal. If I quit this now, I think uh, the state would really like that. Um, but I would lose my farm. I would lose my animals. I would lose my livelihood. If I continue going, it's likely those things could happen anyway. But it's a sure bet if I quit now and let them have it. And if I quit, I'm letting you down, I'm letting my children down, I'm letting America down. I'm not going to do that. And they know that. So, around my house, uh, sometimes I come up with this, hey, I have an idea. 
And I think that's similar to what the Allies did. We got an idea. We know how we can do this. Well, I have an idea, and I know how we can do this. If we can make it to spring, and these animals are intact and fed, maybe we can make it to court with these guys. I don't know. I don't know if they'll push it off till next fall. I don't know. I don't know if they'll try something else, maybe quarantine our property, something like that, <clears throat> or something else. But I know if I quit, it's, it's not the thing to do. It's just not the thing to do. Um, here's what I propose. Um, as far as our legal situation is, is pretty well covered. Um, we've paid in advance on a lot of things, and, and that's covered. Uh, the farm here, I'm going to sadly report to you, is not doing very good. Um, we had thought that we were going to sell this load of pigs to uh, some chefs down in Chicago, 20 pigs that would have got us through till, till spring, would have helped get us through till spring. We could buy feed and, and keep going. I have <clears throat> probably 20 sows here now that are going to farrow again in starting a, a month from now. And so that's a, that's a tough process, and so it takes up a lot of my time. Um, I've asked for money in the past, and, and make sure you understand my feeling on money is money is nothing more than the ability to do work. That's what it is. And people have given willingly. You know, That's how we've paid our lawyers. We've paid our lobbyists. We've paid court costs. We paid for all those depositions with that money. Those, And uh, I think it appears like America's pretty well tapped out on that. And I know it's the holidays. But I'm going to appeal to you. There are, there are wealthy people out there. You're Americans, too. Um, I'm going to appeal to you for help here to keep this farm going. All right? This farm has to make it until spring. We cannot give it up now. So I'm going to appeal to you again for your help. Um, our website is bakersgreenacres.com. There's a little donate button there. But I would prefer a phone call if there's somebody out there that can really help us. I mean really help us. And let's talk about this and talk about ways that we can make a difference in our country. Um, and then if there are people that are close by that could help us out with feed. You know, I'm talking anything. Pigs will eat anything. It's not the best way to go, but neither was the Berlin airlift. It wasn't the best way to go. But, you know, I think if we show these bastards, and that's truly truly what they are, that we will not lay down and take this from them. And maybe future generations will have a little more influence with their government. I mean, it is clear to me that they do not care what you think. You people have burned the lines up down in that governor's office, Governor Snyder. You have burned the lines up. And I know pers from a personal uh, relationship that I have with someone in that office, you know what they do? Those interns unplug those machines. They shut them off. They're not going to listen to that. They don't care what you think. You can make phone calls till you're blue in the face. It's not going to make any difference. The only thing you can do is do the thing. Do the thing. And in this case, the thing is keep this farm going. If we go away, they will have won. We will have no standing in court. But if we can survive until court time, I think we can whoop them in court. At least, at least give them a real good run for their money. Now I don't know what else they're going to pull, and I plan to start making these videos a little bit more often, just to keep you sit repped, as we call it. All right, that's about all I have. Now, uh, one last thing. Um, I am one of America's sons, all right? I joined the military at a young age. I did 20 years in the military during a couple wars that went on, all right? I am home from that now. And this is how my local and state government is treating me, all right? Don't worry about me. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking me. I'm talking the sons of America, sons and daughters of America. <clears throat> we deserve to be treated better than this. 
as family farmers. Now you think about this. The Berlin airlift was about food. It was about starving those people. This is being perpetrated upon us by the industrial food complex. Do you really want them to have control of all the food? Who's going to come and save you? I think the only one that can save you is you. And right now, the Anyone Can Farm pro program is really the only thing that I see on the horizon. And that means American people have got to, to, start to stand up for themselves and learn to be more self-sufficient. Spring's coming yeah, a few months from now. Get ready to get some things in the ground. Get ready to get some chickens in your backyard. Uh, there was just a, a major court case won in Marquette uh, just a, a week ago or so. Uh, a friend of ours, Randy Buchler, took the township to court and said, I have the right to farm, and I have the right to raise food for my family. And he won. So what that means is if you live in town and you want to put some chickens in your yard, you do it. Don't ask any questions. You just do it because there's, there's precedent set in Marquette, at least for this state. And I would encourage everyone to do that, whether you want to do it or not. Just do it as a show of self-sufficiency. Learn how to get some stuff grown. Put some pots on your, on your piazza and grow some tomatoes. A calorie at a time, that's how we lost this. Now start taking it back, and I need you to do that. I really need people to start doing that. We need to start feeding ourselves so we can not be so dependent on this industrial food complex that is taking over, by the way. You can't let that happen. If you lay down and let it happen, then you're going you're gonna to reap the benefits of that. Myself, I'm not. So I suggest that people start to stand up. And look, I don't have all the answers to this. Um, but I think the American public does. If you just start to think, what are we going to do? One battle at a time. The only battle that I'm involved with right now, other than trying to keep my farm going, is, is this DNR thing. Um, some of you will say, oh, well, that's just a terrible thing. I wish that wasn't happening. You sit around the kitchen table, you complain about it to your Aunt Edna and Uncle Stu. But what are you going to do? Here's what you can do. Here's what you can do. Support this farm. See us through till spring, at least. If you can help us with some food for our animals, we would appreciate it. We have equipment that's broke down. We have programs that have just had to slide, and it's difficult. It's, it's difficult, and we're in a difficult time. We're in a time of need. But mostly, I can't afford to kill all these animals off and push them in a hole. If I do that, you know, I, not only would it be a, a major scar on us, it would be a major scar on this battle. So please, help me if you can. I'm going to sign off right there. Happy New Year.